page 206. Activity 4. Taking Notes and Outlining. Part 1. The planet Mars has fascinated people since ancient times, and that fascination has continued to this day. In fact, these days, Mars is again receiving a lot of attention. If you watch the news, you probably already know that several countries have announced plans to put humans on Mars. Uh, both the United States Space Agency, NASA, and the European Space Agency, ESA, plan to do this by the year 2030. So, what's so fascinating about Mars? Why explore Mars and not other planets? After all, there are possibly more than eight other planets in our solar system. What makes Mars so attractive to explore? That's what I want to talk about today. Okay, uh, to begin with, Mars, Mars is the second closest planet to Earth. It's our closest neighbor after Venus, and for this reason it's easy to see in the night sky. Uh, second, Mars is similar to Earth in several ways. It's a well-known fact that Mars, just like Earth, has clouds, winds, a roughly 24-hour day, four seasons, volcanoes, canyons, and other familiar features. Because of these similarities between Earth and Mars, the obvious question, of course, is, is there life on Mars? Well, we don't know. Most scientists think there isn't, but, and this is an important but, it's possible that there was some kind of life there thousands of years ago. Why do scientists think so? Well, um, in 2003, a critical discovery was made. Scientists found some very strong evidence that Mars had water, actually a lot of water, sometime in the past. They know this from analyzing the surface of the rocks where the Mars rovers landed. And the surface shows that there most probably was a large body of water there, probably salty seawater. Now, this discovery that there was water on Mars in the past is critical because without water, life cannot exist. And if there was water on Mars, then there's the possibility of life also. In other words... There's a chance that a long time ago, some form of life existed on Mars. Page 207. Activity 5. Taking Notes and Outlining. Part 2. Now, while this is an exciting discovery for most of us, some people still ask, so what? Why should we care? How does this benefit us right here on Earth? Well, there are a lot of ways that we could benefit. Uh, first, by exploring Mars, we might be able to find out things about Earth, such as why and how life formed here. Um, second, we might also find that Mars could be a place for people to live in the future. The ability to live on another planet may become necessary in the future. After all, we have limited space and limited resources here on Earth, right? And finally, we might need someplace else to live in case of a global disaster. You know, a, a natural disaster or a nuclear war. So, yes, it makes a lot of sense to continue to explore Mars. Not only because human beings have always done that, have always explored new areas, new frontiers of their own knowledge, but also because this specific planet, Mars, seems to be very much like our own Earth, and therefore holds so many possibilities for the future. As I said earlier, Mars is our neighbor, and it's time we go over and say hello. Page 210. Focus on testing. Using context clues. Passage 1. What is the difference between a discovery and an invention? Well, we discover things that were always there. For example, you often hear that Columbus discovered America. In contrast, people invent things that did not exist before. Long ago, someone invented ships, for instance. Discovery and invention are often related because many discoveries are made with the help of inventions. As an example, Columbus used ships to sail to America. Question 1. What can we infer from this passage? 
Passage 2. The ancient Greeks used the energy of the sun to heat their homes. Later, the Romans followed this example and used solar power to heat baths, houses, and greenhouses. The Native Americans were also early users of the sun's energy. Nowadays, car manufacturers are developing cars that will run only on solar power. Question 2. What can we conclude about the use of solar energy? Passage 3. During the Middle Ages, the people of Europe used the Roman numerals 1 through 10 for basic math, such as adding and subtracting. However, the Roman system did not have a number for zero. That made adding and subtracting very hard. Three centuries earlier, Arabic people had invented another kind of numbering system, the one we use today, which had a zero. This system was brought to Europe in the 12th century and quickly became popular. Today, Arabic numbers are used universally in mathematics. In contrast, Roman numerals are used only on clock faces and in outlines. Question 3. What can we infer about the invention of the number zero? Passage 4. Shang Yang was the emperor of China almost 5,000 years ago. For health reasons, he ordered his people to boil their water before drinking it. One day, Shang Yang himself was boiling water outside when some leaves from a bush fell into the large open pot. Before he could remove the leaves, they began to cook. The mixture smelled so good that Shang Yang decided to taste it. In this way, tea was accidentally discovered. Question 4. What can we conclude about the discovery of tea? Passage 5. Rubber is an old discovery. When Columbus arrived in the New World, he saw boys playing with balls made from the hardened juice of a tree. Later, in 1736, a Frenchman working in Peru noticed people wearing shoes and clothes made from the same material. In 1770, an English scientist used the material to rub out his writing mistakes. He named the material rubber. Question 5. What can we infer from the passage? 